Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening in today. This is Megi Mustafai. I'm a marketing professional and a volunteer for the Healthcare Business Women Association at London Chapter. Very excited to be joined today by Gilles Marash, a Senior Vice President and Regional Manager for the Elmac region at Amgen. Gilles, thank you for being with me today. My pleasure. Um, Gilles, apart from being a successful commercial leader, you're also a supporter of allyship um, to support gender equity for um, in, in workplace. I wanted to hear about your personal experience. Um, why does allyship matter to you? And why have you chosen to be an ally for gender equity? If you look, you know, for me, I made a, a decision early in my professional life to work for a company like Amgen because I truly believe in our mission to serve patients. And I quickly realized that, you know, one way of doing that effectively is to embrace diversity and to be really successful at having very engaged team that can bring diverse ideas, diverse opinion, diverse background uh, to help you make you know, better science, better decisions, uh, better execution. And that's really you know, what I realized you know, quite early. Also, you, know, you asked about my personal experience. It's true that working with a lot of very smart women uh, and really also understanding that sometime in terms of you know, the development, the support, the coaching, they have different needs, which by the way, is, you realize that it's not a woman versus man. It means that everybody has different needs, uh, but realizing that and understanding that also as a, as a leader, I need to adapt and I need to provide probably different solution. And then, you know, personally, I'm the father of a, a 24 years uh, uh, ambitious, uh, uh, very uh, active uh, woman. So that was also an additional way to realize that there is barriers and there is things you can do as an ally, as a father, as a boss, as a leader, uh, as someone that cares uh, with, uh, with a woman to ensure that. Thank you. Um, that's quite quite interesting, actually. And I see you doing some of that in practice as well as a um, sponsor for the Women in Power chapter, for example, at Denmark Region for Amgen. What, what are some other things you do day to day to support allyship and what advice do you have for men like yourself in powerful leadership positions to support allyship? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the key things for me is, is making sure first that, you know, men and, and leaders in general, you need to be well aware. Because sometimes that what I see is either you've got, you know, famous unconscious bias that by definition are unconscious and you don't really realize, or you're, you don't really realize some of the barrier or you take for granted things that are not, especially, you know, for me, us, as we manage a very broad geography. So having this awareness is really important. You need the diversity, but you need to build a very strong speaker culture because that, that's, again, it's not granted that it will come. And that's often where, for me, I really empower people to give me feedback and say, hey, you know, be comfortable. I can be an assertive leader. I know that. That's a bias. But I really want to make sure people feel like, don't be intimidated. If I say something stupid or I, if I'm missing something, you know, do it. The, the beauty also is by, by doing that, I, I'm thinking I'm better. The team outcome in be is better, but I'm also role modeling, you know, for everyone uh, what you expect. And, and that's really where you, by being aware and allowing that very open aspect, you can achieve a lot. The second aspect is when you realize that it's really important, you know, there is, there is a good way in business to achieve things is to clearly define what is your goal and then, you know, forcing yourself to say, okay, I have a goal, how do I define success? And then what action I am going to take to really achieve that and really start to operationalize that in a very effective way. I see Amgen having some fantastic programs and having strong partnerships with Healthcare Business Women Association as well, as well as supporting various mentorship opportunities internally. Um, could you share maybe a bit more about how Amgen is supporting gender equity and um, some advice that you'd have for, for companies um, to support as well? And that's where we have this concept of uh, employee resource group, ERGs. We have multiple ERGs around really different aspects that really have a very active force to prov 
propose ideas, to drive activities. And our biggest, largest employee resource group at Amgen is We Too, uh, Women on Power to be Exceptional. So uh, you can see it's a, it's a bigger one. And that's where, for example, working with We Too, we started the HBA program. And uh, you know, we started with 18 women this year. We are going to increase uh, next year. And that's where you can do a lot partnering. And especially if you talk about the HBA program, is understanding how can you do a very specific mentoring and coaching that really apply, you know, and that really more efficient for women. Not meaning that you don't need general coaching and mentoring for everyone. But then again, that's really the value the We2 team and HVA program brings is a specific approach with a lot of tools that, you know, it's good for Amgen, but they are also using that across different companies. So you learn from each other and you have something more powerful. And then you have what you can do as a company. And for us, for example, we are accountable for talent management. So the way you do your recruitment, the way you do your development plan, your succession plan, you can drive that and you can include your diversity goal, your gender parity goal in what you fully own and drive. Because at the end, you know, what we want at Amgen is to have, you know, empowered people that are highly engaged, that feel comfortable to bring their own self at work. For me, it was also very interesting, you know, when we discuss our flex space program. You know, and flex space is really basically uh, our program that give a lot of flexibility to our staff on where you do your work, working from the office, from home, or from uh, anywhere else. It's a program that applies to all our staff and benefit all our staff. Now, again, if you think specifically in terms of gender equity, it has a really good impact on women because the reality is women are disproportionately caregivers you know, have a lot in general to do also managing their family. And when you implement a broad program by FlexPlace, de facto, you are helping and removing some of the other that can disproportionately impact, uh, affect women. Really wise words. Um, any final advice for our listeners? Yeah, no, I think, you know, for me, it's always the same. You know, the final advice is, as a company um, and, and as a staff member, you want to expect a lot from your company and from the senior leadership. At the same time, it's a teamwork and you want to do your own part. You can also yourself take control, you know, be active, propose ideas and, and push things to be better. Uh, that, that's really, I think for me, always really key uh, because you always want to be active and if you feel, you know, you are working in a place where you are not properly recognized, you can't speak up, uh, you not, don't have equal chance, I would encourage you to go to another place. And I want to be that place uh, at Amgen. Thank you so much, El. I, I think that part particularly resonates with me in terms of accountability and, and taking charge of your own opportunities and building your own luck in a way. So thank you for sharing that. Um, um, and thank you for being here today and for your time. A pleasure interviewing well, you. Thanks a lot. And uh, uh, thank you also for, you know, helping and participating in this program and this collaboration with HVA.